All right, welcome back to the Artist Connection podcast. This is Matt Kasar with today's special guest, Michael Marquardt, the man behind A Bad Think. Welcome, sir. Uh, thank you, Matt. How are you today? Oh, I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, it's my pleasure. So you're out in Los Angeles, California, by way of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of bi-coastal, so I'm nice. uh, you know kind of six and six. Uh, you know, I like the the summers in um, in uh, Virginia Beach, but I just cannot tolerate the cold weather anymore. So, uh, uh, and I got studios that, that I work out of on on either side, so it's um, you know I don't uh, I don't have to stop working, so it really works uh, well into my schedule. Oh well, I'm an East Coast guy myself. I'm up in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, so I know all oh, about. Oh, that's a nice part of the country. <laughs> it's all right, you know. But like you're saying, <laughs> the older I get, those winters <laughs> are getting a little harder to deal with. I've never been up there, but I know it's too cold for me. Ah, oh, especially the past few. I don't know if it's just an age thing, but I remember being a kid, and you know, there used to be snow on the ground from Thanksgiving all the way to springtime. But then we had a we had a spell of time where it wasn't a lot of snow but lately we've been just getting hammered when winter starts it comes with a with a vengeance and stays right to the end you know it's funny because i was uh, kind of born and raised in wisconsin and and, oh. and you know how cold it can get sure. there and and i don't remember you know being so cold you know like i like the cold kind of bothers me now but you know you just didn't really kind of think twice about it I'm, i guess it's because you're younger or something like that and but uh, uh, it just, I just, ugh, I just can't stand the cold these days. Well, I'd love to get out to California one day, and I know that's my daughter. My daughter's going to be 16 this year, and that's her dream to one day see California. And you know, it's a beautiful state. Love to do it, yeah, you love it. Yes, I do. How long ago did you move out there? Uh, that's three, four years, I think. Oh, all right. So re- relatively new. Well, let's talk about a bad think. I've been uh, doing some digging into your catalog a lot of great songs out there what what do you have five or five or six total records out so far yeah yeah i think uh don't forget is the sixth and that's <laughs> nice uh, yeah, I, I know you think i guess i don't have anything else to do uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh yeah you, you know it's 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 funny when i i always go well you know this is the best stuff i've ever did and 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 every record is, seems to be getting better and better and better. And you know, if they weren't getting better, I would, of course, I wouldn't be banging my head against the wall. And but it's you know, as I kind of look back and kind of listen to the stuff, it's kind of my whole development as a human being. And you know, you listen to some of the early songs and you know what I was thinking and where my head was at at the time. And and you know it's like a whole kind of story in itself you know i feel i i told my kids i go if you really want to know who 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 i am listen to my music you know you'll get the whole history if you start from the mm. beginning and listen to all all the records but um that's that's uh, it's interesting to note well when it's that personal and i know a lot of singer songwriters are very personal in their approach but does it is it a challenge sometimes if you go back to maybe those early songs or those first records and performing them live or just revisiting them, does that sometimes open old wounds or old emotions, or are you able to kind of keep those separate? Oh, no, it opens them up, yeah, a- abs- a- absolutely, because it's, you know, it's it's like through the stages of, of everyone's life, you know, for, for, for that matter, the, a bad thing just happens to be kind of, you know, mine, you know, my wife, with the, she's had a couple of cancer, mm-hmm. you know, battles, and, and you know, and those I, I know right where those land, and you know, in these songs, and and uh, my my lyrics reflected, and and you know, sometimes uh, it, you know, I wish I could go back. And, uh, I could I could have recorded that better. You know, I could have done that better. I should have changed that. And but you you know, I kind of learn you can't really second guess yourself because that's where I was at that time, right. and that was I, that's what I created at that time. So I'm really kind of. Even I kind of think about going back in and going, yeah, maybe that vocal's a little flat. Maybe I should auto tune that boy. But uh, I think it best to leave the past, but you know uh, where it is, I guess. So you not only play all the instruments and write the songs, but you're you're also involved in the production, or do you have anybody else that? No, I I, I produce you it. Do it it's, all. Wow. Yeah, and it's really such an intensive process because it takes me. Uh, I mean, every day I'm in the studio. Every day, and 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 I, and I, whatever songs I'm working on, I start and I listen and I tweak this. I listen to every note. I listen to the spaces in between the notes, and you know, listening to the drum grooves and all that stuff. And and as I'm listening to it, and it's you know, how is it affecting me emotionally? And I mean, it, it is really sometimes it's 
all of a sudden four hours were, have, have gone, and I don't even know what happened. Or, mm. it's, it's really kind of strange to, to, to explain, but um, it's, 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 real, it's, a, it's an emotional process. And, you know, a lot of people have asked me to um, um, produce you know, records for them, but it's such a process for me that um, it takes so much time and so much emotion, and I'm not used to having any back talk. I mean, it's really, it's my way. If I could have changed the way I'm thinking about it, I can't, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, you know, so I'm kind of used, to, I guess, spoiled in that matter, but uh, it's just, it takes too long, so I just kind of stick to my own stuff. Yeah, cool. How did the journey begin for you? Have you always been a musician? Were there other things in your youth that you were you were focused on before music came into your world? No, I, I have been. I started playing drums when I was five years old, and and I played you know the drums in, in the in the band in junior high school, and and you know in, in bands. And I, I knew that that's, I always have known what I was going to do always. And uh, so I could I could never relate to people in you know college trying to figure out God what do I do where do I go and you know all this kind of, I knew what I was what I was going to do and and there was never any second guessing I just I just knew. What was the first step for you? Did you start your own band even back then or? No, it was really interesting because uh, uh, there was a neighbor. Uh, his name was Anthony, and he had Down syndrome. And he was like the next block over, and it was a small town in Wisconsin, almost kind of like Mayberry. And uh, and and you know, as a kid, you know, back in the day, you're kind of just running around the neighborhood. You know, yeah. you're just kind of hanging out and got. And I heard I heard music coming out of his basement window. And you know, I'm sticking my head down in the little little well, and you know, kind of looking in there, and I see this guy playing a red sparkle drum set, and he's got a record player behind him, mm. and he's playing to monkey songs. And I'm sitting there looking, and then I'd come back, and I come back the next day, come back the next day, and and uh, he saw me looking in. He goes, "Hey, you want to come down and and, and listen?" And so his mother lets me in, and I come down, and he, you know, and watch him play, and then he kind of, "Would you like to try?" and so I kind of sat down. He kind of helped me a little bit, and then I started going over to his. I kind of had to have been, I don't know, maybe nine or ten or something like that, and going over there every day. And uh, he would kind of let me play. And then even if he was gone, I could sneak into that basement window and sit down there and you know <laughs> play, you know, play his red sparkle drum set. I'll, I'll never forget that thing. And I think that's what really got the ball, uh, you know, rolling. And 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 as far as that goes. That was a turning point for me as well uh, as, a, as a kid, you know, having my mom's record collection and then slowly building up my own record collection and, and listening all the time, but not really having that visual. And then you meet the neighborhood kid who has the guitar and is playing the songs in front of you <laughs> that you're used yeah. to just hearing in the headphones. And it's really a groundbreaking moment, like, oh, my God, this is possible to do something like that. Oh, you, you know, it, it was it was fantastic back then, which is why I kind of feel sorry for you know, like young musicians today. Music was the most important thing in life back then. You know, there was no social media, there was no computers, there was you know, there was TV, but no one really watched it. I mean, everything was music. I mean, a, a, a song could actually change your life. I mean, it was so powerful. I'm sure you remember remember those days. Oh, I sure do. And 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 it's it's really sad that uh, that's just not. You know, like my daughter, for instance, you know, I spent so much time, you know, on making these records and, and getting great guys mix it and, 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 and getting it mastered properly and fine-tuning every frequency and all that stuff. And then she's listening to the playback on her computer speakers. <laughs> yeah, right. Not even, not even bad headphones, the <laughs> computer speakers. I'm going, oh, God, this is what it's boiled down to. Oh. And it, it seems like some some artists and some bands are or producers or whatever are mixing for that, you know, and then you, then you kind of yeah. try to flip flop it and listen to it the right way. And it sounds like crap the right way because they're, they're kind of focused on it sounding, you know, how it's going to sound out of a computer or off of an iPhone. Well, you, you know, and I, the, this whole MP3, MP3 thing started all of that. Because sure. when the, the you know I mean there's such a huge difference you know well back when Apple went to 128 kilobits which is unbelievable it's practically like AM radio mm. and uh, you know now they're at 256 which is un unacceptable you, you know Spotify they're all streaming at 256 so you're not you know the depth like the reverb trails and 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 the um, the the depth it's 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 losing that data information that it thinks that you don't need. And so it's just...